In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of power series and then talk about something called the convergence theorem for power series. So first, this is a power series. So if you have an infinite sum that starts, say, at 0, it goes to infinity, and you have a sub n times x minus c to the n. This is called a power series centered at C. So this is a power series. Centered at x equals C. So C is called the center of the power series. If you plug in 0, you get a sub 0. And then you get x minus C to the 0, which is 1. So we don't write it. Plus, if you plug in 1, you get a sub 1, and then you get x minus c to the 1. Plug in 2, you get a sub 2, and then you get x minus c squared, and so on. Uh, there's something really interesting and subtle that can be explained via this definition, so let me just take a moment to show you. It's really cool. So notice that when you plug in n equals 0, you get a sub 0, then you get x minus c to the 0. Well, let's suppose that x is equal to c, because that could certainly happen. In this case, you would get a sub 0, 0 to the 0. You might say, 0 to the 0, what is that? Well, we define 0 to the 0 to be equal to 1. Otherwise, all of this mathematics completely fails, because that way you get 1, and so you get a sub 0. So for this to work, you have to define 0 to the 0 to be equal to 1. Kind of off topic and random, but it's a good opportunity to bring it up. So 0 to the 0 can be defined to be equal to 1. And if it's not, then this entire definition fails. Kind of, kind of a funny uh, thought. Anyways, back to power series. <laughs> so this is a power se series centered at x equals c. So if the center is 0, so if c equals 0, we simply get the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the n. And it looks very similar. You would get a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus etc. So this would be just a power series centered at 0. So there is a big theorem in mathematics. It's called the convergence theorem for power series. So it's like the convergence theorem. And it's a really big deal. So let's go through it very carefully, um, just so you see it once in your life. Also, this applies to complex numbers. And as I go through it, I'll try to uh, explain how it applies to that. So if you ever take a class on the calculus of complex functions, um, you'll, you'll know some extra stuff. So this is the convergence theorem. Convergence theorem. Super powerful stuff. So it says that for a power series, so for a power series, and we're going to look at um, a power series centered at C. So we'll start at 0, we'll go to infinity, we have a sub n, and then we have x minus c to the n. So for this power series, exactly 1, so exactly one of the following is true. It's an interesting statement of the following is true. So there's three cases and we'll talk about all three very, very carefully. So the first, the first case is it converges only at the center. So it converges only at x equals c. So this is the only place it converges. Um, I should note that it always converges at c. If you plug in c, you get, look at this, look what happens. If you plug in c, you would just get a sub n, and then you would just get c minus c, so you just get 0 to the n. So it's going to be equal to a number, right? It's going to be equal to um, well, 0 to the n is uh, 0 unless n is 0, in which case you get 1. 
So it should just be equal to a sub 0. So it will always converge because it's equal to a number. If you go up here and you plug in C, you see all of these become zeros. So you just get a sub 0. So it's a number, so it converges. So it always converges there. This is saying it only converges at x equals C, and it converges nowhere else. Let's look at the picture for what this looks like. So the picture, so in the real case, if you have real numbers, which is what we have in calculus, right? We deal with only real numbers. Um, it would look like, this is where it converges, at a single number C. If you look at complex numbers, and this is just extra knowledge, like extra life knowledge, in the complex plane, it would look like this. It's a point. And a point, a complex number, can be written as A plus BI. And you can think of it, you can think of this complex number as an ordered pair, A comma B, in the plane. So it's the same thing. This, this symbol means nothing. It's just like a symbol. So you can think of it two ways, A plus BI or A comma B. So it's a point. Okay, it's a point. Two. Here's the big one. Um, the second thing that can possibly be true is that there is a number R, capital R, capital R greater than zero, such that, ST means such that, such that uh, it converges, so by it I mean the power series, converges absolutely. That means that it converges in absolute value. If you take the absolute value of your of your of your thing, it converges converges absolutely for this condition, and I'm, I'm going to explain carefully what this means, because this means something, and diverges for this condition here. Notice it says nothing about when it's equal to r, and we'll, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let me give you the picture for this and really explain this carefully because this is something that's useful even in other higher level math classes. Not only classes that deal with complex numbers, but classes like uh, advanced calculus. Uh, if you ever take uh, some really, really proof-based math, this is a big deal. This is what it's all about. Check this out. So for real numbers, let me, let me give you the picture. So first let's dissect this completely. Let me switch colors here. If you have x minus c less than r, that means that you have x minus c less than r and bigger than negative r. You can do that. That's the rule. Whenever you have a less than, you put a plus or a minus. Then you can add c to all three sides. So you would get x less than c plus r greater than c minus r. So you're looking, you're looking at something like this. Here's c. Here's c plus r. And here's c minus r. And x is going to be somewhere in between. So it's an open interval. So it converges in this interval. This is called the interval of convergence, by the way, and I'll write that down later. So interval of convergence, and r is going to be called our radius of convergence. So it converges in some interval centered at c. In the complex case, so if you have complex numbers, this is where it gets really cool. So I mentioned that r was called the radius of convergence. You might say radius. There's no circles in this problem. Ah, but now there is. So when you take it a little bit further and look at the complex case, here's C. C is the center of the circle. That's why people call it the center of the power series. You know, you, we say, why are you calling it the center? Because it's actually the center of a circle. And the circle will look like this. This is really cool. And so this would be a radius. Okay, so R is an actual radius of a circle, and C is an actual center. It's kind of an interesting notion because if you're if you're watching this video and let's say you're taking calculus too, um, it's something that's not discussed, right? They never talk about why it's actually a center or why it's a radius. There's an actual circle, so it converges everywhere in this open circle. This is called an open disk. Open disk. So in in the real number case, it's an open interval. In the complex numbers case, it's an open disk. It's an open disk. Um, it diverges outside of the disk. It doesn't tell you what happens on the boundary of the disk, like where these dots are. Likewise, it doesn't tell you what happens at the endpoints. So we're often going to have to check the endpoints because the theorem says nothing about convergence at these, at these endpoints. Three. Three. Uh, it converges absolutely for all x. That's the last case. So it converges absolutely 
for all x. I love this theorem. This is such a big deal. Having way too much fun here. Um, so for real numbers, let me give you the picture. So for real numbers, if it converges absolutely everywhere, then it's just going to be everywhere on the real line. So the interval of convergence is all real numbers. And for complex numbers, it would converge in the entire complex plane. So one of three things will happen. It converges only at the center, it converges in some open interval, centered at C, or it converges everywhere. So those are the only conditions. R, this is called the radius of convergence. Radius of convergence. And now again, you see why it's an actual radius. It's, it's, it's the actual radius of a circle if you consider a series in the complex plane. In one, so in the first condition, let's go back to one. Oh, I guess you can see it here. So it converges only at C. So if you think, okay, what's the radius of, of this circle here? It's just a dot. So the radius would be zero, right? Because it's like an infinitely small circle with no radius. In three, so if here's your C right here, let me use a different color for C. So here's your C, and then here's your C. So the radius would be infinity. So you could say the radius is equal to infinity. It's like the circle just blows up and takes over the whole complex plane or takes over the whole interval when you're dealing with, with real numbers. Let me fix my infinity. There we go. So in three, the radius is infinity. In two, the radius is just a positive number. So nothing needs to be said about that. And I mentioned this before, but I'll write it. The set of all x, set of all x for which the series Oops, the series, my handwriting is failing. <laughs> the series, it's, we've, we've passed the 11-minute mark, uh, converges is called the radius of convergence. Uh, sorry, interval of convergence is called the interval of convergence. Interval of convergence. So the set of all x for which the series converges is called the interval of convergence. If you're wondering, wait a minute, in the complex numbers, it's not an interval, it's a disk. You can call it the disk of convergence or the domain of convergence or the set of convergence. Uh, you can give it many names. It's just the set where the series converges. But in calculus, uh, we call it the interval because it is actually an interval. It is actually an interval. And again, the theorem says nothing about the endpoint, so typically we'll have to um, check. So what's going to happen is uh, we're going to be given an infinite series and we'll have to find the interval and the radius of convergence. And typically we'll use the ratio test. And whenever you use the ratio test, we'll have to check the endpoints. Um, in the videos that follow, uh, you'll see many, many more examples of this. This video is already past 13 minutes, so I think I'm going to stop here. <laughs> and uh, in the videos that follow, we will uh, do some actual examples of this. So I just wanted to make a theory video discussing this because it's, really, uh, it's really key. Good luck and take care.